Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa. For those of you that are new around here, I am a watercolor artist and artisanal paint maker. Today's video is brought to you without my glasses. I cannot see a thing, but the glare was just way too much. So we're going to try this without my glasses today. Hopefully I can navigate through it, um, even though I can't see anything. A thing. So today I am going to talk to you about watercolor supplies on a budget for beginners. I usually get asked a ton of questions on my specific supplies, which ones are really good for beginners, which ones are budget friendly. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today just about a couple of things um, that won't break the bank, but are still very high quality watercolor supplies. So stick around. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you can. That would really help me out. My goal for 2020 is to put out a new video every Saturday. I would love it if you would subscribe, give my channel some love, um, and follow me over on Instagram at Vanessa underscore paints underscore. Let's get started. So today we are going to talk about buying watercolor supplies on a budget. What does that mean? Well, we all know that art supplies can be extremely, extremely expensive extremely expensive but you don't always have to compromise your budget in order to get really good quality watercolor supplies so i'm going to run you through a few of the things that i use that i love i still use to this day some things i have upgraded but when i was starting out as a beginner watercolorist i really did go through a lot of supplies trying to find the best that worked for me uh, the best brushes the best paper as i'm talking about these items i'm going to put the prices around here somewhere um, and everything that I talk about today I will put a list of them with links in the description below. Let's get started with our very first topic which is brushes. If you watched my 2019 favorites video that I posted last week and I will post it up here for you you will have already gotten a, a look a behind the scenes look <laughs> at some of my favorite budget-friendly brushes brushes that I still use to this day. The first one that we're going to talk about are the Princeton Select Brushes. So these brushes come in packs of six or seven. I don't really remember. I will put it over here. <laughs> uh, they come in different packs. Over the past three years, I've purchased several packs of them so that I can get a good range of brushes. As I said in my previous video, I've only ever had to replace the size 10 brush because it frayed because I used it so, so much. These brushes are very inexpensive and they are so, so good. They come in a, a really nice range of shapes and sizes. These are all of the ones that I have here. They have flat brushes. They have angled brushes. They have uh, wash brushes big and fluffy and they are all so extremely affordable i highly recommend these brushes for beginners anytime anyone asks i give them these brushes and then the ones i'm going to talk about next um but these are the ones that i first started with when i started watercoloring and i never ever had to switch them out for another kind of brush so i started with these and i stuck with these i've just started upgrading these to um, princeton heritage brushes but I still keep these in my stash and I'm not decluttering these because I still love them. In terms of affordability and value for your money, these are great. Okay, Let's talk paper. I'm going to start this off with a little disclaimer. I'm going to talk about some um, very budget friendly papers that are good learning tools. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a higher end paper and how you can get them on a budget. First up, Canton XL watercolor paper. I can tell you that even though I preach, and I do, I preach 100% cotton watercolor paper until, you know, the cows come home. And the reason that I preach that is because it's going to give you the most effective tool for growing and um, improving your skills. I always say, I, and I, I, I'm going to repeat myself and I'll probably say it in every single video. 
If you're going to spend any type of money on watercolor supplies, put it into your paper. Put it into your paper. You will see the biggest improvement in your skills by improving your paper. But if you go for the cheaper watercolor paper, especially as a beginner when you don't know much about paper, you will think that it's you. You, you will say, you know, why isn't this coming out the way that I see it on Instagram or on Pinterest or I'm following this YouTube tutorial? Why isn't my painting coming out like that? And nine times out of 10, it's because of your paper. But you won't know that because you are just beginning and you don't understand that the paper is working against you. Canton XL is a great paper to practice on for learning, for um, students. Canton XL is a really good paper for just starting out. I started off with Canton XL. I still use Canton XL. Sometimes I'll get really great results and sometimes I won't get as great results. But I also, I, I wanted to give you an option um, where you can have a paper that you can purchase for very little money and still be able to practice. You will get okay results on Canton paper. But if you're a beginner, you won't know if you're doing something wrong or the paper, it's because of the paper. So Canton XL, it's okay. It's budget friendly though. It, it really is. I have experimented with a ton of paper, a lot of paper. I have, um, I have more paper that I can <laughs> grab and show you guys, but I'm going to talk about three uh, different types of paper from the least expensive to the more expensive. So the first one is the Arteza 100% cotton watercolor paper. I I love this paper and I will show you a painting, I'll throw it up here, uh, a couple of paintings that I've done using this paper. So this is again 100% cotton watercolor paper. The paper is textured paper and it has a lot of tooth to it and I actually, I love that in my cold press paper. Also every paper that I'm talking about is cold press. I don't usually work with hot press paper but it has a nice tooth. The pages are super large. Um, for the value, it's great. These are 9 by 12 sheets, and you get 14 sheets. The great thing about cotton paper is that you can use both sides of it. So if you're not satisfied, then um, you can turn it around and use it. For beginners, I always suggest, when I was a beginner and someone told me, you have to upgrade your paper in order for you to take your, your painting to the next level. One person was just, she was like drilling it into my head, upgrade your paper. And I said... That paper is ridiculously expensive for only 15 sheets. I'm just learning. I can't afford to go through that much paper. My advice to you is to take your paper and cut it in fours, in sixes. Uh, cut your paper. And that way you'll have, so, you know, cut it in half. That way you'll have double, triple, quadruple the amount to work with. And not just, you know, 14 super large, nine by 12 sheets. So cut your paper into quarters, cut them into thirds. The Arteza is great um, and it's a great budget friendly paper for those uh, wishing to experiment and, and taking their, um, their paintings up to the next level. So if you've never tried cotton watercolor paper, uh, a few things that you should know about it is that it stays a a wet a little bit longer than regular paper. Um, you can work on your piece a lot longer on cotton paper because you won't have sections that are drying off at different times. The paint goes down smoother and more evenly on cotton paper. So that's Arteza. Next up is the Legion Stonehenge paper. And I've purchased these papers on Amazon. You can get them on Blick. You can get them at your local art supply uh, shop. I will put the price here. Legion Stonehenge is my number two go-to paper. I really can't say enough about this paper. So I have this paper in white and I have the paper in black. And it is 140 pounds. Again, it's cold pressed paper and this has uh, 15 sheets. You will notice when you're out there shopping for paper that there are two kinds of, of papers that you can buy. You can buy a pad of paper, which is like the Arteza and it's just a regular pad of paper see um, all of the pages are just glued to the top you can rip them out you can also buy a block of paper if you are a beginner I suggest that you buy a pad of the paper instead of the block and just tape your paper down 
to a surface. And the reason that I suggest that is because this is a budget-friendly video and pads of paper are usually um, cheaper than blocks of paper. So we have the Legion Stonehenge. This one is a block. They also come in pads and you can get them fairly cheap at Amazon, Blick, local art supply store, everything. These are 100% cotton watercolor paper. It has um, a slight tooth to it. It's slightly textured and I love uh, my textured paper. So this is, it's thumbs up. And lastly, we have my holy grail of paper, which is the arches paper. This arches is a block of paper and the block is just, you know, it's glued down on all four sides. This is my favorite paper. I use this for 95% of my paintings that are not in journals. It's expensive. So you're asking, what is this doing <laughs> on a budget friendly video? Because this is expensive paper. I never ever buy arches at full price. If you are in the States and you are close to a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or any of those craft, big craft stores, uh, Joann's has them. They always come out weekly. They come out with 40 to 50, even sometimes 60% off coupons. You can also download their apps. I know Michaels has an app. Hobby Lobby has an app and the app has a coupon every single week. So anytime I am in the, on the market to buy some paper, I go in with my coupon. Most times I do it with the 50% off coupon. The great thing about all of our arts and craft stores here in the US is that they honor each other's coupons. So if you have a 60% off coupon from say Joann's um, and you take that coupon to Michael's because Joann's didn't have your block of paper um, and you take that coupon to Michael's, Michael's will honor that coupon. So that's how I get all of my papers. So a pad of Arches paper that usually goes for about $24, $25, I get it for between $10 and $15 depending on the coupon that I have. Sometimes you can double up your coupons as well. This turns out to be just as comparable as let's say a, an Arteza. If you are an online shopper like I am, I do not like to go to the stores and shop. I really don't. I don't even know why. Um, but if you're an online shopper, this is not sponsored. Um, but if you've been on YouTube for a while, you already have heard this because I've seen this company sponsor a lot of YouTubers. I am not sponsored. I have been using this for years and years. Um, and it's called Honey. You can get it as an extension on your Chrome browser. And anytime that you check out, um, Honey will scour the internet for any coupons, coupon codes, promos, promo codes, and they will apply it to your order. So if you're checking out, Amazon hardly ever, ever has any. So I wouldn't even bother with Amazon. But if you are on a website such as um, Michael's, like a crafts website, you don't even have to have your own coupon. Honey will look up the coupon for you uh, upon checkout and apply it to your cart. So I always I, I always shop with the Honey extension on my computer and I always get discounts. So you can use the Honey or you can use like the regular 40, 50, 60% off coupons for any art supply, but I always use it on paper. Um, and anytime I see any paper, if I, if I happen to leave the house that day and I go shopping, anytime I see um, Arches paper, I always look for my coupon. I usually have it on my app and I'll pick it up. Let's talk paint. My word of advice before I begin this to anyone who is brand new to watercolor or who is just starting out or they're just finding their footing is to go with a ready-made pan set of paint. When I first started watercoloring, I um, went on YouTube, I went on Instagram, I went on Skillshare, and I saw all of these beautiful, beautiful pieces being done with tube paints. And I thought tube paints are the best. That's what I need to get because in order for me to feel better about the not so great work I'm putting out, I need to upgrade my paint to tube paints. And this is the result of that. I have, I have all of these tubes of paint, so much paint, and I don't use any of it. I use a few things, but I don't use the majority of them. 
And you know, it was such a waste of money. It was such a waste of money for me to have invested so much in all of these two paints. I even made my own palette because I had severe palette envy. Um, so I made this palette out of all of, not even all, because this is not all of the colors that I had, but I made this palette. Um, this was the very first palette that I had and it has all of these colors that I never, ever, ever, ever use, ever. I hardly ever paint in any of these colors. I never use orange. I couldn't tell you the last time that I picked up this palette. It's been about a year to a year and a half since I've used this. This has just been stashed at the bottom of my bookcase collecting dust. This, along with all of those two paints. My advice to you as a beginner is to invest in a really good set of pan watercolors. And they do not have to be expensive pan watercolors. You can get yourself some amazing quality pan watercolors at a very affordable price. I'm going to talk to you today about two pan watercolors that are phenomenal um, quality for the price of them. The first one is the Windsor and Newton Cotman set. This is what they look like. So this little set comes with, it doesn't come with a swatch card, I made my own. Uh, it comes with this adorable little travel brush, which I never ever used, um, but it's really cute. So you might use it. And it comes with 12 um, beautifully saturated colors. So as you can see, my palette is really well loved. Um, after I got over the mania of, you know, all of these two paints, I was just so overwhelmed. I was so incredibly overwhelmed with what to do with all of these paints that I had. And I wasn't inspired. I, I couldn't paint anything. It was having all of those two paints really blocked me, blocked my creativity. So I put all of them away and I got myself this cute little 12 pan set. Um, and these are the colors that come in it and you can see how bright and vibrant they are and i took this everywhere with me everywhere i painted i paint i used this for about seven or eight months before i decided to pull out my tubes again and um complete another palette so for beginners i would definitely recommend start small start don't go crazy buying a ton of colors start with a small set mix your colors you don't need to have 15 million colors like i did it was a huge mistake if you wanted to go for um palette with a lot more colors than this small 12 color set of windsor newton my other recommendation would be the arteza 36 color watercolor set and these are another great great um set for beginners now, this um, was given to me as a gift from Arteza for me to try out, and I love it. I still I still use these. I have my professional watercolors, but I still use these watercolors. I will put a video up here of one of the paintings that I did using this set, uh, one of the tutorials that I've listed here, um, or that I've uploaded here, and it's using these set, this set. So you'll see just how vibrant these colors are. Here is the set. It comes with a water brush. I don't ever use water brushes. I don't like water brushes. I have control issues. I cannot control the water uh, output with watercolor brushes, so I don't, I don't use them. But if you wanted to expand, you can take the water brush out and you have another row to add more pans to. So um, these are the set. Look at, look at those beautiful, vibrant colors. This is another great beginner option. If you are adamant in wanting more colors than just the 12, this is a great beginner option. So those are the, the three big main um, purchases that you're going to have when you are starting out in watercolor. Here are a couple of little miscellaneous things that you can do to save yourself some money. You don't need a fancy brush holder for your brushes. Use some mason jars. Here are all of my brushes in some mason jars. This one isn't even a mason jar. This was an old spaghetti sauce jar that I cleaned out, washed it, took the um, 
the label off of it and now it's my brush holder don't look at this disgusting disgusting jar <laughs> I, this is this is disgusting i should probably wash this um but this was an old pickle jar yeah that's what this was this was an old pickle jar that i now use as my water jar and i have two of them that i keep at my desk at all times um filled with water instead of using paper towel to clean off the paint from my brushes i use just a regular um washcloth um, i have a few of them just always laying around not only does it save you money but it saves the environment too you all know how much i love my circle tool but you don't necessarily always have to have fancy gadgets like this although how fancy is this but <laughs> you don't always have to have like these fancy gadgets you can use a plate you can use the bottom of your mason jar there are you know a million circular things laying around your house that you can use to like draw circles any way that you can find to save a little money is always great because hey you can reinvest that money into more art supplies i'm gonna go with that if you have any budget friendly watercolor supplies that you want to let me know about or any tips and tricks to save you some money please leave them in the comments down below i would love to hear from you and thank you i will see you next week bye hi i am a watercolor water watercolor watercolor surprise surprise <laughs> jeez okay <sighs> all right Be um just like the princess the princess the princess brushes <laughs> wouldn't that be cute though it comes with 12 oh why does something always fall <laughs> what is that yes watch more videos